When people talk about the horn god of the Celtic people, they most likely think of Canunos. You know, that stag-headed god that we see on the Gunderstrup Cauldron. But Canunos wasn't the only horn god of the Celts. There were many. And so today we're going to look at who these gods were and what they represented. So let's start first by looking at the god that they did call Canunos. In terms of pronunciation, I tend to favour Canunos. That sits well with me, but then there are others that would say that the correct pronunciation is Canunos. And we get the name given to us from a depiction on the pillar of the boatman found in Paris. And this pillar is a monumental column erected by the Romans in honour of the god Jupiter in the 1st century AD. On this pillar is inscribed the word Canunos under a depiction of a stag-headed god. And the word Canunos stems from a Gaulish root, Canon, which means horn. And so Canunos or Canunos just simply means the horned one. And he goes back a long way. The first depictions we have of an antlered god goes back to the 4th century BC. And there we find a rock carving carved into the stone of an antlered figure who appears to be engaged in some form of ritual. But there are many depictions of the stag-headed god and they are found right throughout the whole of continental Europe and right up into Britain. But the most famous of all is the depiction that we see on the Gunderstrup Cauldron. And this cauldron, which was dug out of a peat bog in Denmark, dates right back somewhere between the 2nd and 1st century BCE. The depictions on this cauldron don't just tell us about Canunos, it tells us a whole host of things about the belief system of the Celts. And the imagery on that cauldron is, well, it's worth an entire video by itself. So keep watching this space because that video will be coming very soon. So we know this stag-headed god is very old indeed. And we also know that he was venerated right throughout Northern Europe. But the question really begs us, what did this god really mean and what did he represent? We often see him sitting cross-legged and holding a serpent, sometimes two serpents and sometimes they are serpents with the ram's head. He also wears or carries a talk and is oftentimes accompanied by other animals. And on many occasions, he's seen with symbols of commerce and trade. And so what does that tell us about him? So let's first talk about the commerce and trade and the symbolism there. And that symbolism is usually portrayed by him 
either carrying a purse bulging with money or a purse sitting somewhere within the scene. There's even one depiction of him that comes from Luxembourg and in the lands that were once the lands of the, the Celtic tribe, the Treveri. And in this scene, he's accompanied by a stag that vomits coins from its mouth. All this symbolism, as well as the fact that he was chosen to be portrayed on the pillar of the boatman in France, suggests that he was a god of trade, commerce and travel. The talks he carries tells us of his supreme authority and his high standing as a god. The animals he's so often seen with tells us he is a lord of the beasts and a lord of the wild lands and the woodlands. And the symbolism of the serpents is probably the most telling and most interesting. This suggests that the stag antlered god was a catonic god and a god that had dominion over the underworld. So this then is the stag antlered god. But what about those other horned gods. And by other horned gods, I'm referring to those gods that we see wearing the horns of a bull and a ram. And these horns are meant to represent something completely different. Namely, the power and ferocity of the animals that actually wear them. But they also represented fertility, prosperity and protection. You see, these horns were symbolic of the herds and flocks that provided a livelihood and sustenance for the tribe. And so by utilising the imagery of the horns, they were in fact invoking the spirit of the positive characteristics of the animal into their gods. So by adding horns to their gods, they weren't actually trying to portray that these were gods of the herds and flocks. What they were doing was enhancing the gods' own symbology with that of the positive attributes associated with the animal. So all of the symbology represented by the god was increased and magnified by the addition of all the power and ferocity represented by the horns. We see this imagery of the horns depicted on a number of pan Celtic gods, such as this one, where we have the Romano-Celtic Mercury slash Lou, accompanied by Ros Murta. But it's not just on pan-Celtic gods that were enhanced with these horns, it was also the local gods. Now if we come back to Britain, we find there are many gods depicted with the horns, and especially up in the region of Hadrian's Wall. Well, Hadrian's Wall, you might say. Well, that was a Roman wall not a Celtic wall. Why would there be carvings of Celtic gods on a Roman wall? Yes, it was a Roman wall, but let's not forget that the Romans were in Britain for over 350 years, and their regiments and legions consisted of conscripts from all over the Roman Empire, and in the latter years that included those that were once part of the Celtic tribes. Yes, but why do I say they were local gods rather than pan-Celtic gods? Well, that brings me to a very interesting paper that was written by the renowned archaeologist and author, Anne Ross. And I'll 
put a link to this paper down in the description below. The paper is called The Horn God of Brugantes. And in this paper, she tells us that these horn gods represented the tribal warrior and protector gods, the war gods that were associated with Mars. And we see inscriptions of he on Hadrian's Wall to Mars Bellaticadras and Mars Cassidius, which clearly make some gods of war. And being up on Hadrian's Wall, right in the Picts from the north, then of course they'd want to bring their god along for the ride. Now if we look further into Anne Ross's paper, and indeed into work of other Celtic scholars, we see that there was a tribal set of gods. Lucan's Pharsalia tells us of the tribal gods to Tartus, Tyrannus and Isis. Now we can't expect all of the tribes throughout the entirety of Northern Europe have had exactly the same gods, or at least not by the same name. But the structure, the social structure, was very much the same. And we understand that generally speaking, the tribes all had a mother goddess, a protector and warrior god, a god of the priesthood and the spirituality and probably the god of magic and a god of the skies, the hammer god. And so the warrior god, the protector god, carried the imagery of the horns to represent the spirit of power and ferocity in battle. And just as the herds and flocks provided sustenance and protection to the tribe, then so too did their warrior god. And so then, those are the horned gods of the Celts, the stag-headed god that represented prosperity, lord of the animals, and lord of the wilds, and lord of the underworld, and the horned god that represented power, and ferocity, and protection. And so if you've all enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And with that, I'll see you again in another two weeks on the next one.